in the early days we talked a lot about what to do we said well I know what I don't want what is it that I do want and if you catch it early you can take that pivot there are things that you can do and so if we were standing in your physical shoes this would be our approach I'm gonna get out ahead of it as much as I can and then as my day unfolds I'm just gonna do my best to find my path of least resistance and want to add one more thing this has been a wonderful way to begin this gathering this is the central idea that is the underpinning for everything that we've just talked about you want to ask yourself as you move through your day what influence am I under right now am I under the influence of source in which case I feel high flying and really good and confident and secure and eager and fun or am I under the influence of something that somebody else wants me to do or some old thought that I used to think or am I under the influence of what my mother has been asking of me or what she thinks I should do what influence am I under and you can tell by the way you feel what influence you're under so if your dominant intent is to tune into that influence and then all through the day your dominant intent is to be aware if you're still under that influence then you're good to go and here's the most important thing there's going to be plenty of times that you're going to acknowledge I'm not under the influence of source I'm under the influence of my employer or what somebody else thinks I should do or my girlfriend or my boyfriend or my kids or my parents I'm under the influence of what society thinks about that because those thoughts do not stop on a dime those thoughts are still active and so when you realize that you are under the influence of something other than source that's when you just say well that's perfectly logical of course of course His thoughts don't change all of a sudden but I can look at this through broader perspective and then once you get good at this you can say inner being how do you see this and you'll get pretty good at tuning right into that because things that used to just knock you over because they felt so unjust will seem amusing to you because you're looking at the big picture it takes a little while to get down the road like that and we don't mean that you're gonna mock and make fun of plights of others or of yourself we don't mean that at all this is really what we're trying to describe when you croak and you are going to we use that disrespectful word because there's no such thing as death so when you reemerge back into non-physical the very first awareness that you have it's so wonderful to watch you show up back up here it's not up <laughs> it's not over it's so wonderful when you reemerge to feel the humor you feel and the laying on the floor laughing that you do there's no floor <laughs> as you see so clearly all the stuff that you made a big hairy deal out of that none of it means diddly squat it just doesn't matter it just does not matter it was the basis of more period it was never meant to hold you back and that's what step five is step five is blessing the contrast and understanding its value step one is being buried by the contrast and letting it keep you from being under the influence of source step five is being under the influence of source and aware of contrast and loving the contrast step one is not being under the influence of source and struggling in the contrast and that's where you started as you sat down you were step one in the contrast and almost everybody does that when you find yourself defending rationalizing I didn't reach my goal because of this 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 every time you're doing that it's a step one moment and step one moments launch rockets of desire but it's not a time that you're letting things in so I'm gonna make one more statement and then you're done <laughs> feel the distinction the important distinction between a step one moment and a step three moment that's all because both are important to your experience and stop being mad at yourself when you're in a step one moment because step one moments matter even when you predominantly hang around in step five moments you're still gonna have step one moments because there's gonna always be new contrast that's gonna help you launch more rockets so we would like it so much if you could be having a step one moment and then get over it really quickly
And the reason that we're saying that to you is because we're honing in on something that you do that we think you should not do anymore. And this conversation will help you so much. You have a tendency. And so everybody in the room to some extent does too. Esther does too, of being in a step one moment and trying to get to the bottom of it and explain how you got there. And all that does is prolong it. It's like step one is the question. Step three is the answer. Well, you can't get the answer till you stop asking the question. So imagine that you're standing with some mentor who has all the answers. Imagine that you're standing with someone who knows what you want and where it is in relationship to where you are. And you keep saying, well, where is it? But before you can hear the answers about which impulse to follow and where to go, you say, because I can't find it. And then the answer is being offered and you say, and I've been looking for a really long time. And the answer is coming, you say, and it's nowhere to be found. And there's nobody around me that knows where it is either. And almost everybody feels the same way that I do. And we want to give you some words. That's co-creation at its worst. <laughs> That's co-creation at its worst. What you're reaching for is co-creation at its best. Really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.